What's up y'all, Talon here. Today I'm back with another series of ranked battles featuring top teams in the Regulation F metagame for one of the final times. Today we have Aaron Brock. I goes by Clippers on Twitter. I have his Twitter account linked in the description. We're using his team. It's a pretty interesting take on balance. So it has the Amogus and Cinderella Urshifu core along with the Ogre Pawn cycling fake out Amogus to get the Swords dance ups and then Urshifu in position. Uh, Raging Bolt with Assault Vest instead of Calm Mind, just going for a bit AV uh, bulkier approach a little bit more immediate damage and then lastly is the Corviknight which is really the star of the team. This Pokemon handles uh, physically defensive Pokemon so well with Rocky Helmet bulk up. Oftentimes you're also using it as an effective Tailwind setter for your Ogre Pawn or your Urshifu where your opponent is focused on the Corviknight defensively uh, and offensively with the bulk up Brave Bird combo. You can set up Tailwind uh, when they're not expecting it. Maybe lead Ensign, Corviknight, Parting Shot, Tailwind into your Sweeper and then go from there. So real incredible team building effort from Aaron, he was able to get top eight at this tournament before losing, I believe, to Justin Karras in a pretty difficult matchup against Psy Spam. Um, or really the Reggie Drago being able to basically just go for Follow Me plus uh, Dragon Energy and just sort of like wipe most of his board, do 45% to Corviknight. Kind of difficult. Corviknight doesn't have the best stats, but definitely in certain matchups can be an MVP. So congratula congratulations to him. If you want to use the team yourself, I have the rental code in the top right of the video, as well as the pokey paste with the EV spreads in the description below. Follow Aaron on Twitter, and yeah, let's get into some battles now. All right, up against 54 on the ladder, they have what looks like a rain team with Urshifu, Tornadus, Archaldon, Fluttermane, uh, Ferrigrath, and Landorus Incarnate, so potentially a lot of rain options here, which I have two fire types, so not ideal. They also could be Power Herb um duraludon that's like been popping up a little bit on these kind of teams as in like a best of one format it's pretty good but yeah the that could actually be really annoying for me i think urshifu is a decent call though overall like against a lot of their pokemon defensively uh kind of i don't know we could catch them with a weird terra but i'm not sure if i'll be able to I'm gonna lead with this. They're probably gonna go for something cheesy. Like, I mean, they're just gonna go for Bleak Wind turn one, right? Which I'm totally okay with. I think I might slow play this just a bit. Uh huh. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe Amoongus is good. If I had Protect, I would definitely go Amoongus, and that feels kind of right. But I might just bait them out with this guy. Amoongus, and then last will be the... I don't know if we got that in, but I tried to go Corviknight last second. I eh, That could be a mistake, but it does wall Fluttermane pretty hard. It walls Landorus Incarnate. It can hit the... It actually walls Urshifu pretty hard with the Rocky Helmet Brave Bird, so... I feel like Corv was the right bring here, whether we got it in or not, or any of our Pokemon correctly, is uh, up for up for grabs. We'll see it here. Torn Lando, good lead. We did go Urshifu, so that's good, but unfortunately we kind of just get Dunkaroo'd. Hmm. I think I'm going to go Electroweb Protect. Could. Uh, do we live Earth Power? Probably with the combination of that. I think I'm just gonna go. Ooh, is Electro Web right or no? Maybe. Feels right. Well, Covert Cloak would be a problem. Uh, kind of. It actually wouldn't be that big of a problem. So if I wanted, like, I think. Um, the issue is here I can't terrestrialize my Urshifu, and even though I probably have enough bulk to hit to live this, okay, interesting. They do not actually. Uh, they would have let me attack with the Urshifu, and they Earth Power into the Ursh. So yeah, maybe they read the terrestrialization there, but we catch them with Earth Power with the um, Electro Web, and if we hit this, we're in a very good spot. Ooh, they tank that though. Okay, lower their speed so they're not Covert Cloak. Ah, uh, this Urshifu is probably very bulky. Uh, 108.36 isn't that bulky, unfortunately. I could see... Uh, you know what? I'm actually just going to go for a Thunderclap here. Or a Thunderbolt. I 
think we'll tank the hit and we get Corviknight in for free, kind of. I don't want a Thunderclap because Ferrigraph feels reasonably likely to me here, but they don't bring it out. Interesting. We're going to get the Corv and probably Tailwind in a second, which is good as long as they don't knock out. Oh, they Sludge Bomb the this guy. They're really reading a switch, or a switch types. We dodge on the Corv, which could have dropped them actually, but we are going to knock out the Torn, so that's really good for sure. They can kind of just snipe us with Earth Power now, and if they bring in... Yeah, I would have actually rather not, like, gone for a Draco there. I think that was a misplay. I should have Draco'd the Landorus to put it in Aqua Jet range, because then I get a free turn to go for Tailwind. Yeah, Arch is annoying. I feel like that's definitely Power Herb, which is tough. Uh, do I have a switch in? Not really. I could get cute in Terra this turn, but I, I think that's kind of foolish. I think this is the Power Herb turn, so I'm going to switch into Amoongus. And if they don't go for a... basically a Power Herb Electro Shot, then I think we're in a good spot. Because they... Yeah, I don't know. I feel like we're in a good shot spot. They Earth Power finally. I could have gone for the Terra. I was like tempted. I'm like, yeah, we finally get him this turn for sure. But no dice. I didn't Thunderclap because I didn't feel that was necessary either. There is the Electro Shot and this is what uh, the value of kind of being aware of what's going on in the metagame on Battle Spot particularly. You can kind of see this sort of thing coming. Yep, there is the Power Herb. Power herb. I almost second-guessed myself, but we got it. Um... Nice. We are about to stall out their Tailwind, which is pretty cool. Have they gone for a Terra yet? They have not. Huh. They probably don't... I think we're defensive, Amoongus, so we should tank a hit. But they can most likely knock me out with Draco, which is annoying for sure. I'm going to go Corv and set up Tailwind, though. Oops, don't click that. And then I could go Terra Ghost, but I think that's actually of no value, unfortunately, to me. If I can somehow live the turn, I'll take a Spore into the uh, into this guy, but I think they probably have me with Flash Cannon Earth Power. And they don't have anything else to do with on, the, on that slot. They can charge up Power Herb to hit my Corviknight, unfortunately. I don't have a good defensive Terra against that. They don't knock out the Amoongus because we are very specially defensive. But uh, yeah, I think a Flash Cannon clears us after the Power Herb boost. I don't know what Terra they are on the Duraludon, unfortunately. Not the Duraludon. But I don't think it matters. I think I can go Tailwind, bulk up the next turn, go after the Duraludon as they Terra, most likely. Yeah, they lose their Terra, so that's good. So I think this is a free bulk up. Landorus can never hit us if we don't Terra, so that's kind of a dead slot. We just focus the partner. Right? Yeah, they don't have a switch in for this. So I'm going to go for Detect, because they're essentially forced to go for a Terra defensively in front of this. Otherwise, I knock it out with Close Combat. Brave Bird, I think. I feel like it's Fairy Terra, though. It could be gr uh, Bug would be reasonable, but that would fold to Brave Bird. So I guess I need to cover as many Terrastalizations as possible. Given we also give them a stamina boost. I think it's usually sturdy actually on these teams, but they are thinking a lot on this turn. We did bait out a Terra. Nice. Very good. We do threaten a knockout on either Pokemon with Urshifu, so it makes sense. But it was the Lando, which is totally fine. Sludge Bomb, that's not going to do it. It's actually kind of interesting though. Um, again, we do 1v1 this guy so we just have to focus the partner earth power and the ursh yeah makes sense it's kind of an interesting spot though they draco into the urshifu which is cool yeah weird spot for sure I 
can't Terra. Their back Pokemon is likely what? Something that folds here. Weird spot. Uh, I think I actually need to balance my Tailwind turns correctly here. No, I should be fine. I think this is a lock because this covers for them being st uh, sturdy, essentially. Yeah, which they are. So yeah, again, we know it's Power Herb. Sturdy, just because it's a pretty common set. I don't think we live this Earth Power, but we will have one more turn to st of stamina to work with and we double up into this guy and knocked out. Might've been one of the rare situations where it is a good play to go for a protect in front of the Urshifu just to stall out a turn. Um, but we'll see. Yeah, they go for Earth Power, should be knocking me out here. Yep. Would have liked to have gone for a Surging Strike, um, but just don't have the damage. If I Drain Punch or Shifu or literally any fighting move other than CC, I think we wrap this up real quick, but not the case. For Rigraph is interesting. Okay. For Rigraph, what are you doing there? So as long as I don't Roost, I always beat you 1v1. I think I just go Bulk up here. Or do I Brave Bird? Brave Bird's a 2 at KO, almost surely, so I'm going to go for that. They're protecting on Lando. Like I said, this is the advantage of Corviknight. It does lock down defensively, one of the most common Pokemon in the format offensively. Uh, Landorus Incarnate, so another bulk up would have let us knock that out. But after Hyper Voice, I don't think they, even after a Throat Spray, can knock us out, so we're kind of chilling there. Um, best play now is... Maybe Roost or Attack. Corviknight is already in the battle. We only have five Roost. I guess uh, Aaron didn't fix the stream mishap he had, but if we live this hit, we win. I think we Roost up though. We're definitely faster than the Landorus. Yeah, just to play this as safe as possible, I think we Roost because they can't get more strong with the Hyper Voice. Yeah, they're protecting there which I think is a waste unless they're Iron Ball Earth Power. Yeah, they Sludge Bomb. No way to hit us, so we are going to close this endgame out. They make an error there by going for Protect when they didn't have to. Because, yeah, their only way to win was, I think, Crit Hyper Voice into Brave Bird Recoil there, and I just eliminated that win condition, so should be a forfeit. Yep, there is the Earth Power. We are not going to give them the Roost. I was very careful with the Tailwind turns to make sure that... Uh, we weren't... Yeah, that did a ton of damage, though. Like, you could imagine the crit plus the Brave Bird would have knocked me out at, uh, at like, what, 55% HP? So, we don't fall for that, and now I do believe we just beat them. We are going to go for a Roost here. I don't want them to be Rando Hammer Arm or something silly, but they do cancel out. Yeah, they trust me to be careful in this endgame and not just give them a Roost into Earth Power. So, good game to them. They were, like, 50th on ladder, and... They're definitely making some aggressive plays. They were using some sketchier sets, which uh, tend to be a little more successful on ladder, but we do get them covered in our uh, with Aaron's team here. Just the Corviknight definitely clutching up. He said it was very clutch in his Swiss round, in his day one Swiss round, so can definitely imagine that. It does have a very good matchup against uh, Urshifu, Amoongus, kind of Incineroar as well, Fluttermane, a whole bunch of Pokemon, so very impressive. Uh, team building decision there and it does just kind of sit on the field and make your opponent's life uh, very difficult with Tailwind as well as just setting itself up. Alright, my opponent here has a team that was doing pretty well earlier in the season with the Gouging Fire, King Gambit, Fluttermane, Incinor or sorry, Chen Pao, Ogre Pond Wellspring, and Dragonite. Looks like food to young Korv, truthfully. Yeah, I can really handle that a lot of their Pokemon with bulk up. is a solid lead against a lot. Amoongus even cuter to some extent. Uh, I like Raging Bolt a fair bit. But that's maybe kind of foolish, hard to say. Uh, I do like Urshifu a lot. Uh, you know what? Cudgel is really annoying for Korv, so I have to be wary of that. I think King Gambit... 
King Gambit Ogre Pawn could be annoying, so I'm actually going to lead very, very defensively with Amoongus Corviknight. In the back, once I get Tailwind up, I think Urshifu could be pretty strong, and then Ogre Pawn seems strong as well. I could really see this guy being good as well, but defensively I could use a switch for some stuff, maybe the Raging Bolt in the back. Hard to say. I could have seen the Ogre Pond being good, but I do feel like the Urshifu kind of covers everything that the Ogre Pond does. So as long as, like, outside of Terrastalization Water on the Ogre Pond Wellspring, like, Urshifu handles everything else with Surging Strikes or Close Combat quite well, and the Dragonite walls both of them, so I want the Raging Bolt to cover for that if the I can't just, like, 1v1 it with the Corviknight. So it is King Gambit plus the Raging Bolt annoying or not the raging bolt but you know what i mean heat crash would do a lot i think probably wouldn't knock out how heavy is my boy corv probably not that heavy how bulky is corvanite versus gouging fire that's its name heat crash is a knockout wow if it's max okay in that case i will go should I just put one asleep? That's high value for sure. Uh, that's pretty greedy. I'm feeling greedy though. I'm down to Sacamungus for a uh, bulk up. Protect, okay. I guess it's Swords Dance. That could have been pretty bad if they Swords Dance, they would have out damaged me. They might be going for a Howl, which would be something, but I don't think so. Yeah, there's the Heat Crash, so we should go down on the Amoongus to pretty low, but heal on the Citrus Berry, and then we get the bulk up to live successive ones. And now we're feeling pretty good, actually. Because now what I can go for is a Tailwind. Yep, I can Tailwind pretty safely. I really don't think they're going to Heat Crash my Corv, so I'm not even going to Rage Powder. I'm going to play a little aggressive and Spore the King Gambit. Safety Goggles King Gambit would be annoying. Probably should have Spored the Raging Bolt, but if both of my Pokemon live here, I'd, you know, I'd be fine. Or not the Raging Bolt, the Gouging Fire, but I think the Amoongus is likely to go down here. They kind of have to attack it with either Howl, Kowtow, or Heat Crash. Yep, there is the Howl, so glad they didn't Rage Powder. They tried to play around that and get a little greedy this turn. But I guess it's kind of ineffective unless they're uh, like minimum speed Corviknight. Yep, there is the Kowtow, but it is into the Corviknight, which is not a knockout, thankfully. So that's really good. I get the opportunity to probably go for another bulk up. Or, uh, mm, I can't really go for the bulk up, can I? Could I Terra Fairy here and kind of do well against them? Outside of the Dragonite, yes. I think I'm just going to go for a Roost Switch, though. That feels more appropriate. Roost uh, Rage Powder, rather. Because Bulk Up, I'm not actually doing much damage to the Raging Bolt or, or the Gouging Fire, so I'd like the HP back on Corv. I'll trade a bulk up and a tailwind for my Amoongus here. Not gladly, but I think they can't really out damage me here in this end game or in this early game. Unless they commit a Terra to doing it, which is again, something I'm comfortable with, uh, but they do have the Howl on the Raging Bolt or the Gouging Fire. That's something I need to be wary of. They have not gone for a Terra on the King Gambit yet though, which is something. Close Combat or Brave Bird, this guy. Hmm. Actually, Ogre Pond might be an issue for me, truthfully. I think I'm gonna bulk up, assume they stay asleep, and go for a Surging Strikes here. Maybe I should have, like Roost would have been, would be aggressive if they are gonna wake up. But if they switch into the Ogre Pond or something, which probably unlikely, I don't know. 
If they don't wake up on King Gambit, this is very, very positive because I'll live the Heat Crash and be able to roost next turn. But it's not certain by any means. Uh, the King Gambit is going to stay asleep, but they could crit the Heat Crash or, you know, they could switch in the Ogre Pawn. Interesting spot. King Gambit does switch out in the face of probably a close combat, which maybe that's Dragonite or Fluttermane. Okay, it was the Ogre Pond, so they maybe read a switch, but... Ooh, Surging Strikes isn't going to 2-hit KO, is it? That's dicey, but we can of course close combat then if they don't... Oh, that does 2-hit KO, actually. That's super good. So there's the Heat Crash, but we're going to get a bulk up up. If they don't crit, yeah, so that's good. Rocky Helmet's chip, chip, chipping them down. That did... Uh, I think I... So that was 1.5. I'm now at plus two. They're at plus one. If I Terra, do I live? I think no, unfortunately. Ah, that's quite bad, actually. Okay. Hmm. That is bad, bad, bad. Okay. Should have roosted, huh? Last turn of Tailwind. I can roost here. Terra Water. Are they going to Rage Powder here? Most likely, yes. I think I have to bank on living, truthfully. Like, I don't really see a much better option. Yeah, I, I don't think I live, though. Like, I, if I was, if we were neutral, the plus one boost plus Terra, I think, would get me there it would go to two-thirds and then half which is like one-third but i think because uh the way them yeah they they terra too so they they get me this turn pretty bad shoot yeah i could have close combated there but i thought i had the hope that they don't do that in particular and they do knock out shoot i should have terra last turn that was super super duper a throw that's okay it's not over yet because i have electro web on the gouging uh, the Raging Bolt, but that was definitely a bad misplay of the Corv. Uh, I didn't get a whole lot of Tailwind or Bulk up here because I did not use my Roost or my Terra correctly. I think I was trying to hold on to the Terra in case the Dragonite came out, but in retrospect, I don't know if that would have been that effective for them in the first place. So what I'm going to go for here is... And I wasted my Terra too. That was so stupid. I knew I wasn't going to live, but I was kind of going for a Hail Mary. Now I'm going to hit get hit by a pretty strong Breaking Swipe, unfortunately. But they are going for a Terrastalization. That's interesting. Terra Fairy. To live a Dragon Pulse? But you could always just follow me, th me there. Regardless, I'm going to get this Electro Web off and love it. There is Follow Me. Interesting. Yeah, they didn't expect Electro Web. Probably going for a breaking swipe, I'd have to imagine. That doesn't make sense though, because you're following me like what I are you expecting snarl or you have to be expecting snarl and hoping I thinking I'm not gonna knock you out then. Which is an interesting call, but um, not the case here. Yeah, we knock out the raging bolt, they don't have Terra anymore, and now we probably could close combat their overpawn for a KO. Um, at least Thunderclap. Uh Thunderclap it. I doubt I outspeed their Ogre Pawn with the Electro Web now. I'm pretty sure I don't. I don't think Raging Bolt is naturally fast enough unless they are just very bulky Ogre. But this is one instance where like, if I had close combated a turn earlier, I'd be in good shape. But I just didn't want them to uh, Horn Leech there. Oh, that's a weird switch, actually. I'm not sure I follow that. Because now I should just have Thunderclap CC. No. And then what? Then probably lose to whoever they... If, if they have Flutter in the back, I lose to that. Um, let's look at my speed first off, so I don't trip and fall over myself. 100 speed, they'd have to be pretty slow to not be outspeeding here. So I think I go Thunderclap, close combat. If they switch out into Flutter, great play. But they don't. Okay, so this should be a confirmed KO. And we are now rolling on King Gambit sleep turns. This will be their first. So if they wake up and kowtow, GG right there. Because they can kowtow knock out my, my clappy boy. 
Yeah, they stay asleep though. So depending on who they have in the back, I think if it's Chen Pao, we have a shot. Uh, but based on how they've played, I doubt it's Chen Pao. It's Chen Pao, okay. So obviously easy peasy close combat into you. You have to sucker punch Sacred Sword me for a knockout, which I doubt KOs. And then I do what? Uh, yeah, Sacred Sword is actually losing damage on close combat. Losing damage because, like, relative, like, another move because of close combat. Sacred Sword ignores the defense draw from close combat. Jesus. Okay. Thunderclap, free. Close combat, free. Mm, no reason not to break the Sash. Sucker Punch shouldn't knock me out on the Raging Bolt. Yeah. No priority coming out from their Chen Pao. High school crash, hoping for a flinch, fair enough. And they don't get it. Okay, yeah, we looks like we're making a comeback, which I thought was definitely not going to happen, but um, I indexed poorly on the core of Terra, hoping for a Dragonite, essentially. Uh, like, kind of praying it'd be the Dragonite, so I could just 1v1 that, but doesn't end up being the case. We do just close out versus the Chen Pao with... Ooh, no, this was a... I just choked. I just choked real bad. A crit sucker punch loses. Ice shard. Okay. Fair enough. That's actually very cute. That's very cute because that handles iron or uh, raging bolt if it doesn't have Terra very well. About as well as sucker punch, I guess, because like 70 versus 80 base power essentially, but still cute. Better against tornadoes and things like that, which has been popping up with focus sash a lot. So I like that. I don't love it. I think it's worse generally, but it's cute in my like best of one for sure. So a good game to them. I think things definitely got away from me on the Corviknight. That was pretty sloppy. Um, so just, I think it can be easy to just be like, bulk up. I'll just get my, my bulk up, my tailwind, and then I'll never roost. I'll never play defensive. I'll never get to use any of my attacks or use my turns effectively. But I think when it's kind of like playing Porygon, you do just have to trade your damage selectively being like okay now i'm finally safe i don't need to hit recover this turn because um there's just no threat to me now even after i attack so yeah i think if you've played porygon 2 core of a night plays pretty similar to that just knowing exactly when to hit the recovery move the setup move for speed control and uh, go on the offensive is just like kind of an art you get a little better at it with experience using the team and i am definitely uh showing some inexperience in some of the Terra used in that last battle. Okay, opponent here has the pretty common Japanese. All right. So my opponent here has a balanced team that I'm pretty used to seeing. It's the Chen Pao, Urshifu, Raging Bolt, Incineroar, Ogre Pawn, plus Rillaboom. So this is kind of known, like Corviknight is solid into a lot of these Pokemon, um, but it is weak to the Raging Bolt. I am pretty weak to the Raging Bolt as a whole, actually. Outside of, of course, my boy Insin. I love Insin and Mungus against these kind of teams. They kind of need to lead Urshifu plus Fake Out to have a chance. And even then, I just switch out into this guy and uh, beat them back. So the only question is who I pick as my last. Corviknight would be cute, but I think I don't handle their Raging Bolt quickly enough. Yeah, Thunderclap could be annoying from them. I guess they only have Thunder... Eight, uh, they might not have enough thunderclaps to beat me. Much to ponder, but their ogre pawn is of course a concern and probably something I need to be a little bit more aggressive um, or a little bit more immediate in handling. Terra fire Urshifu, I believe I have. Kind of cooks here though. So I'm gonna go with that. So leaving the Corv on the bench here, uh, it's strong against everything on their team except uh, set up Ogre Pond would be an issue. If they are focused energy, that would be really bad for Corviknight. That's like its worst enemy. Something that can deal with the Intimidate Cycling plus defensive setup is just like obviously inherently a Corviknight counter, especially when you have super effective Ivy Cudgel. So, oh, I actually love their their image. The, the seal and the... Why, why am I thinking Gordon? What is it? Um, Dugong. Jeez. So... We get Incineroar, Intimidate. It could be Clear am Amulet on Chen Pao. That's definitely popped up a bit. And we see the activation of the abilities. So Among Us, obviously not ideal here, but it is what it is. Um, do they even have a knockout? Probably. 
They probably do, but I might have a switch in to the Ursh. And a parting shot. Which is what I'm gonna go for. So we are switching first. I think they'd have to make a pretty aggressive read to catch the Urshifu on the switch here, but it's possible. Spiky shield, fair enough, uh, but no protect from the Chen Pao, which is interesting. They could be sacred sorting here, which would be quite annoying. Flash out. I haven't seen that in a while, but that actually makes a ton of sense, especially on this team. Uh, it does a ton of damage. I feel like that could be choice banded. Maybe not. They're probably worried a bit about Scarf here, so they might switch out. But I will be the one switching out. Ha ha ha. Um, I'd like to... Intimidate this if I can. I took a lot of damage there. I'd like to get a parting or a Pollen Puff onto my Urshifu at some point, but it might be hard to get. Uh, what I might have to do is switch into the Raging Bolt, bait an Ice move or a Ground move, and then switch in Urshifu to Pollen Puff it, but then uh, that's getting pretty dangerously close too. Lash Out Chen Pao, very, very solid meta ad adaptation. I actually like that a lot, especially in Best of 1. So they're switching out the Chen Pao to reset the Intimidate because the damage output isn't that impressive. They're also weak to a Surging Strikes this turn. And we are switching before the Ogre Pond, which indicates they did not switch or they are slower for some reason, which uh, we, we did reveal to them we are not Choice Scarf based on the Chen Pao switch. Ivy Ch Cudgel comes out, great prediction actually. No crit though. That's pretty annoying for sure. Um, that's very annoying. Yeah, they're, they're playing circles around me thus far. That was a great play. Kind of predictable on my part, but it is what it is. Uh, Urshifu seems ill-advised because I fold to another IV cudgel, of course. Plus dry, plus, uh, well, I don't fold, do I? I do get the surging strike off, no. Probably not worth. Hmm. Could intimidate them one more time. Fake out Spore. Will I live a Draco? Uh, yeah, I wish I knew if they were... Oh, I'm already in battle. Dang. I'd love to apply Fake out, though. Bummer. I'm going to go Urshifu not to reveal my Raging Bolt. But this has gone pretty poorly so far. They've made some solid plays. Uh, could Terra defensively, I think that's a little over aggressive, maybe. I just feel like they're not gonna. Hmm. I feel like they're not gonna go for that, and I should probably start getting aggressive with my play. Can I afford to lose Amoongus yet? I don't think so. I think I'm going to switch Protect. Yeah, so I could have lost my Amoongus here. I think I'll likely just end up taking a Dragon Pulse or a Draco on the Ensign. Uh, which is obviously an idea, not ideal. If I can get into a working position with Amoongus, I can Pollen Puff myself, but it's pretty difficult at this point to do so. So they did end up Ivy Cudgeling and going for an attack. So I could have gone for a Surging Strike free from... Yeah, we could have Surging Strikes there on the switch. So a bit annoying, but it is what it is. I think they kind of need a Rillaboom here. We've finally gotten some good damage. I think they probably don't give me Surging Strike. They have a switch in. Could be the Urshifu. Hmm... Yeah, weird spot for sure. I think I'll Surging Strike just because it covers a lot. Kind of. Should I close combat the Raging Bolt? Maybe get some damage off there. They went for Dragon Pulse. Um, I'm going to close combat. It could be an error. Yeah, they switch out. So if it's Flutter Main, I'll kick myself super hard, obviously, but I feel like it's a defensive switch in. Uh, it is the Insin. Surging Strike was free there. Unfortunate. Okay. 
Ensign's a bit unexpected, but uh, not that crazy. Yeah, I could have knocked that out. That's fine. I'm, it might actually be, be better not to have knocked it out, truthfully. Yeah, we wouldn't have knocked out because of Citrus anyway, so I'm, I'm fine with that play defensively, all things considered. They could lock a Flare Blitz into one of my guys, and we do confirm they are probably the Calm Mindset, which will beat us 1v1, which is annoying, obviously. Uh, whichever they lock a... F I'm not really threatening their Raging Bolt at all on the Urshifu, so I don't think they're going to target into it. So I feel like what they're going to do is maybe go for a knockoff or a Flare Blitz double up into the Ensign, which is of course annoying, but maybe my opportunity to get into position here. Uh, I probably get doubled here, unfortunately. I think I'm going to attack. I don't know if I got that in, but I meant to go for a switch Surging Strike into the Ensign. I think Thunderclap is reasonably unlikely here, given how much I've switched this battle. But, you know, if it's Detect, that's a forced error on our part. Yeah, Calm. Could have kept my Amoongus. That is, that's really a bummer, but it is what it is. Ah, oh, that's super frustrating. Oh, they go for that, which is a play for sure. Uh, I think now they almost, they don't have to do anything, but I feel like this is my spore opportunity for sure. Huh. I could survive a Flare Blitz. I've been playing super defensive. I'm gonna Surging Strike the Ensign. Yeah, it's annoying I didn't get that off last turn, but maybe better because they Flare Blitz the Ursh. Probably better because now I at least get the opportunity to Surging Strike that switch in or get a Spore on the Raging Bolt, which is solid. Oh yeah, um, if you don't attack, I'll definitely take the Surging Strike. Yeah, they give me that. That's absolutely fine. That should be an Aqua Jet range. If Chin Pao's on the field, even if I am intimidated, so... Dragon Pulse gonna do a lot of damage here, but I think I've gotten the damage I need. Dragon Pulse into the Amoongus. Okay, we're climbing our way back. We are climbing. That's good. That's super solid. Uh, good turn for me. But the damage into this Raging Bolt is still limited. Let us not forget that. Okay. Do I care about the Amoongus HP at this point? Probably. Probably do. I feel like Aqua Jet is... Mm, it's going to be close. If they switch in the Ensign, probably not. It's going to be close. Could Terra Fire and just guarantee a KO. Which I'm tempted to do. Yeah, I'm just going to go Aqua Jet. I think if they switch into Ensign, they'll probably live. It's going to be close, though. They don't switch, so this should be a lockdown knockout. And we're burning the first turn of sleep on the Raging Bolt. We'll also bring our own in, which is, I think, favorable overall. Yep. Okay. The issue is that Raging Bolt's going to be hard to break. For sure. I should be able to maybe outcycle it and eventually force a Terra. Uh, I probably don't force a Terra because I'm not Calm Mind myself. Yeah, going to be a, a weird series of turns, I think. Chan Pao comes out, totally fine. I think this is probably Lash Out from them. I think I'm going to take the opportunity to hit a Draco into you and switch. Well, should I... Hmm. Can I... Pin down... This guy? Maybe. 
Thunderwave would put you in range of some stuff, which I would love to get you in range for. I think I'm going to Draco switch. Uh, is that short-sighted? Maybe. Wanted to switch. Yeah, I'm, I need to get way better when I'm playing balance to not be indecisive. If I'm out of stuff to do at the end of the turn, I just need to go for it. But we do get the Terra off. But I don't think this was Electroweb. I think this was Draco or Thunderbolt. I went mid-ground, which I should not have gone for. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, could be Terra on their Bolt. Yeah, it is. Fair play. Good play. If they stay asleep, we're chilling. Uh, I think we locked Detect there, just because it's our first move, but... Yeah, okay. We did show we are faster between the two of us. Not like they're going to have Electroweb, but... Yeah, there's the Sacred Sword into the Chin... Or the Urshifu, which makes a lot of sense because they wanted to catch the Ensign, and we get the Electroweb off, which is super high value. We can Aqua Jet before them now. And we've also cleared the way a bit for... Yep, there's the Dragon Pulse into my own Dragon Pulse. Totally okay with that. They can Thunderclap me for some big damage now, but, you know, that is what it is. We just have to figure out how to deal with this guy. I think this is Thunderbolt switch to Incin still. Um, I'm pretty sure we'd never risk Amoongus at the, like we try and pin the game down to Amoongus plus Urshifu, live a Dragon Pulse and then two Surging Strike Shigus there, maybe. But it's gonna be close. I think that Electroweb was a pretty big misstep because then I'm threatening Thunderclap KOs into the Chen Pao and now I'm probably not, maybe I am. Um, but yeah, we eliminated the risk of Ice School Crash, huge damage, and otherwise... Oh, they switch out, sure. Thunderbolt's gonna do a lot to that. Maybe they get another Calm Mind up, maybe they go for something else, but yeah, just getting any damage on the Ensign is valuable, knocking it into Aqua Jet range. So that I don't have to worry about Thunderclap, potentially. Yeah, Thunderbolt. No Thunderclap from them, so pro ugh, Knockout there would've been great. Dragon Pulse, probably a KO, of course, yeah. Interesting spot. Can we 1v1 them with Chen Pao or Shifu? Yeah, I should have Thunderbolted. Dang it. Um, I can bring Amoongus in, force a fake out. Hmm. Yeah, this forces fake out, which is ideal. I think I go Amoongus, I force the fake out. Uh, I take the hit. Uh, then I lose the 1v1? I'm not sure about that. I just don't think I have the damage just yet. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm gonna lose on your time potentially. Whatever. Yeah, could have gotten some turns more correct. Oh, they choked. Yeah, you got a fake out there. I guess my play confused them enough because Dragon Pulse shouldn't be a knockout on Amoongus now. Yeah, that's totally fine. Um, I mean, with that, now we just Thunderbolt Sludge Bomb you. How much did that do to me? Um, they're gonna lash out, most likely, but that won't knock out my Urshifu on Switch. They'd have to Sacred Sword me, which I'm down with. Thunderbolt, probably not Sludge Bomb. I think just... Maybe Sludge Bomb. Switch or Sludge Bomb? Switch. Switch. Sacred Sword, probably a KO here. I need to learn my my rolls, though, on the Chin Pao. Because if this KOs, then I should be going for that. Ice Shard. Okay, a lot of Ice Shard Chin Pao. Is it Choice Band? Okay, crit. Makes sense. I feel like they were Choice Band, though. Honestly. It's getting to be too much, man. Too much damage out here. 
I wasn't tracking how much damage Among Us was taking, truthfully. I think I'm just gonna hope they stay asleep because I don't have the turns. Yeah, they don't go for Thunderclap either. Yeah, I might have switched out and tried to slow play it, hope I live a hit and then Spore, but I don't think I have the turns to do that. So if they don't wake up here, we're chilling, but if they do, things go a little sideways. Yeah, they don't even go for the wake up with Thunderclap, and now I think we get there. Yeah, if they had Thunderclap, they would have won. We were doing a lot with the Thunderbolt, but I think we probably have it now. Given we're faster than them, we just have to input our move, so good game to them. Nailbiter, very, very slow paced, but... I think my approach here was probably bad. I don't think that matchup is that stressful. I did take a lot more damage on the Urshifu than I expected to turn one, but it is what it is. I think at this point, this should be fairly free Thunderbolt, 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 and then maybe a Thunderbolt Spore. Probably Sludge Bomb is better, but they cancel out. Yeah, they don't know about my year time being so low. Yikes, very, very good battle against them. Had a lot of fun there. I think they were pretty decently high in the ladder, maybe like around top 100 around us, but yeah, been really enjoying the Corviknight team. Once again, congrats to Aaron Brock for his top eight finish at the uh, final regional championship of the Regulation F format. Really incredible performance. Corviknight wasn't really on anyone's radar, but was able to get one final finish in the last tournament of the format, so no one can ever say it wasn't good if it finished on a win. So yeah, with all that being said, if you guys enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel. The Poke Paste is in the description of the video, as well as the rental code if you want to use the team for yourself. With all that being said, uh, yeah, peace y'all.